medcram.com. Welcome to another medcram video. We're going to talk today about exercise. When people tell us that we need to exercise, the vision that we have in our mind is that we need to go to the gym and do something very exertive. Today, I want to convince you that the amount of exercise that you need to do to get benefit from it is actually a lot smaller than you think. So if we look at the recommendations for weekly exercise, you'll see here that each week adults need to spend 150 minutes. So that's about 2.5 hours of moderate intensity physical activity, which is in terms of METs, and we'll talk about METs in a little bit, is about 3.5. We're talking around nine MET hours per week is what the recommendations are. We'll take a look at that and see whether or not we actually need to get that much to even start to get benefit in terms of the treatment of depression. Because the problem is we can all do exercise when we want to do exercise, but in today's age, we are very busy and it's hard for us to get to the gym and do physical exercise. Also, if we're depressed already, we're not going to really want to get out of bed and do exercise. And because of that, there's a low motivation to getting this stuff done. And so there's a barrier. So let's take a look at the evidence to see why it is that it's so important to just do even a little bit of exercise in terms of getting your mood on a better path. So the first study here that I want to look at is published in JAMA Psychiatry, and it was published just last year. There is the link at the bottom. This was a meta-analysis looking at 15 studies and a total of over 190,000 people. And these studies were limited to just those that showed outcomes for more than three years and more than 3,000 subjects in each study. And the outcome that they were looking at was depression. Now, we said we would define what a MET is. So a MET, just so we know what we're talking about, is a metabolic equivalent and is considered and defined as the equivalent to the consumption of 3.5 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute. And really, that is sort of the very strict definition of it. But there are some general definitions for what a MET is. For instance, light activity would be around 1.5 marginal METs above what you're doing at rest, whereas moderate to moderately vigorous would be about 3.5 marginal METs, and seven or more would be vigorous physical activity. And we'll talk more about that as we get into some of these studies. So this is kind of a little bit of a definition. If you want more of that, you can see here the METs, and you can see here there's light intensity activities, 1.52. Moderate intensity would be three to six, and vigorous activities would be greater than six. And you can see here some of the examples of that. So when they looked at all of these studies and put the data together, this is what they found looking at the risk association by activity volume. So they're looking at the number of METs times the number of hours per week. So for instance, if you do three METs of activity and you do it for, let's say, 20 minutes a day for three days a week, that would be for one hour. And so your MET hours per week would be three. So that's pretty low level. If you did three METs of work for an hour a day, and you did it three days a week, then that would be three times for an hour. So that would be three in a day, but you did it three times a week. That would be three times three, which would be nine and so forth. So again, we're looking at the number of METs that you do and the number of hours per week. They found in this meta-analysis that if somebody did just 4.4 MET hours per week, so that could be literally you could do 4.4 for an hour one day and then do nothing for the rest of the week, or you could split it up. Notice here what they found was a 18% reduction in depression risk association and a 17% reduction in major depression and a 20% reduction in elevated depressive symptoms. That's only at 4.4. If they did 8.8, .8, notice that the numbers got even better. And if they went up to even as high as 17.5, there was some improvement, but notice that most of the improvement happened here going to 4.4 and then 8.8. .8. If you translated those numbers into the amount of depressed people in the United States, you would see here that at that 4.4, there would be a 6.38% reduction in people who are depressed if they were to do this type of activity. 11.53% reduction in percentage and a 13.89. There's a large benefit here early on, and then it kind of tapers off. 
and you can see that here for major depression and elevated depressive symptoms. To look graphically here, the majority of the benefit of reduction in depression, if you do physical activity, happens here even before five met hours per week. So in other words, if you do five met hours per week, you can have a reduction here pretty significantly. This is the reason why it's so important that if you're depressed and you want to reduce your depression, you need to battle being sedentary because just moving around and doing something is going to move the needle from here to here, more specifically from here to here. This is not where you want to be. You want to be at least here. And if you can, you can even get more benefit doing this. Let's look at the association between physical activity and major depression and elevated depressive symptoms. Here's major depression. Again, very similar curve where the majority of this is happening even as low as five or six met hours per week. These are marginal met hours per week that you're doing extra. Again here, just above five marginal met hours per week. So you can see that the majority of this benefit is happening early on. So this is what the conclusion was from this study. This meta-analysis found an association between physical activity and incident depression. This suggests substantial mental health benefits can be achieved at physical activity levels even below the public health recommendations. We kind of looked at those at the beginning with additional benefit for meeting minimum recommended target, but limited extra benefit beyond that. You can see here that levels off where you don't get much more benefit. Assuming causality, one in nine cases of depression might have been prevented if everybody in the population was active at the current health recommendations. It's extremely important if you are depressed not to be sedentary. You can get a tremendous benefit not even doing a major workout at the gym, but just walking around and doing some sort of physical activity. This is even more important when we talk about our youth. This was a paper that was published three years ago, Depressive Symptoms and Objectively Measured Physical Activity and Sedentary Behavior Throughout Adolescence, a Prospective Cohort Study. So this looked at 3,000 subjects it was prospective, it was observational, but instead of just asking them how much they walked in activity, they actually measured it using an accelerometer. And they looked at them at 12 years of age, 14 years of age, and 16 years of age, and then looked at depression scores at 18 years of age. And it was a pretty good balance between male and female. And what they noticed was that the amount of moderate to vigorous activity did not change as they went from 12 to 14 to 16. It was pretty low in terms of minutes per day. But what did change was the amount of sedentary behavior went up, whereas the amount of light activity went down when they went from 12 to 14 to 16 years of age. And even more importantly was what it was associated with. Those at 12 years of age, when they checked them at 18 for depression, they found that the count per minute, the amount of activity, was statistically significantly associated with a reduction in depression, whereas sedentary behavior was statistically significantly associated with an increase of depressive symptoms. And we saw this across the board in the unadjusted model and also in the fully adjusted model. This was adjusted for sex, maternal social class, parental psychiatry history, parental education, ethnicity, baseline depression, and total exometer wear time at each time point. Exercise is protective against depression, but sedentary behavior is actually promotive of depression. Light activity, again, protective. Moderate to vigorous activity at age 12 was protective. If we look at 14 years of age, we can see again that activity, protective, sedentary behavior was not protective. It was actually harmful. Light activity was protective and moderate to vigorous activity was not statistically significantly different. Exposure at 16 years of age, again, activity was not statistically significant, but sedentary behavior was statistically significantly associated with harm in terms of depression. Light activity was protective, statistically significant against depression. Moderate to rigorous activity was not statistically associated. What are we noticing here? That light activity, light activity, and light activity here across all age groups was protective against depression. And so you don't have to do very intense, rigorous activity. You can do that, but you don't need to, to protect from depression. 
This is what the author said. Sedentary behavior increased and light activity decreased throughout adolescence. This is important to understand. We'll talk more about this when it comes to video games and what kids are doing with their spare time. And they were consistently associated with depressive symptoms at 18 years of age. An additional hour of sedentary behavior per day was associated with an 8 to 11% increase in depression at 18 years of age. And participants with persistently high or average sedentary behavior levels between ages 12 and 16 had significantly higher depressive scores at 18 years compared with those with persistently low sedentary behavior. An additional hour of light activity per day between age 12 and 16 years was associated with an 8 to 11% decrease in depression score, and maintaining persistently high levels of light activity was associated with lower depression scores. This is the area where light activity, getting outside and getting some exercise, can actually be very beneficial as opposed to this, especially late at night when light is getting into the eyes and shutting down melatonin production. It's also important to do this activity, if possible, early in the morning or when the sun is coming up so you can get that bright light exposure at the beginning of the day. It also helps with cortisol level. And if you can walk outside and get some light exercise, there's a lot of benefits to walking around in nature and also getting the benefits of that sunlight. We've talked about this somewhat before in our video COVID-19 update in terms of stress, anxiety, and immunity. And again, this showed that in terms of upper respiratory tract infections, in terms of exercise workload, that as soon as you start to exercise, there is a reduction in the amount of upper respiratory infections and also stress. However, this J curve shows that as the intensity of exercise increases, so does the stress put on the human body. So again, I am advocating here very strongly for light activity as opposed to sedentary behavior. This is not for people to stop doing strenuous activity if they want to do that. What we're looking at here is people who are generally sedentary and depressed. You don't have to get out there and do very strenuous and difficult activity to get the benefits. What you can do is just very light activity and there actually will be a tremendous improvement. And I want to remind you as well, if you go to medcram.com, which is our home website, we actually have a whole course on optimal health and immunity, and it's absolutely free. We've gotten great reviews. This is on our website, medcram.com. If you liked this video today, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, leave us a comment, and join us at medcram.com for not only more information on optimal health and immunity, but also information for healthcare providers on things like mechanical ventilation and other diseases and conditions that can help you in your practice in terms of education. We also give continuing medical education units. Thank you for joining us.